invite uh, Professor Milan Hote from All India Institute. He's a, he's a well-known surgeon with a lot of interests, uh, including coronary artery disease, heart failure, lung failure, and as would be expected from someone in that position, a lot of um, index publications. He's the member of the Apex Technical Committee for NOTO. Milan. Good morning, respected chairpersons, uh, faculty members, and dear delegates. Thank you, sir, for the kind introduction. Uh, I thank the ECMO Society of India and uh, MGM Hospital uh, team uh, for giving me this opportunity. Uh, in fact, I have been here a bit early, and I have spent two days here, and I have seen the excellent setup uh, under the leadership of Dr. Bala and his uh, team, Dr. Ravi Kumar, Dr. Suresh Rao, uh, Dr. Murli. Uh, and uh, I have seen the phenomenal work that they are doing in terms of uh, uh, everything, uh, the heart transplants, the lung transplants, the ECMO uh, program and the MCS program. So it is definitely pretty impressive and it's a, a very good learning uh, center for many of us uh, who would uh, like to uh, advance in this particular uh, specialty. So coming to my uh, talk, the cannulation strategies for Vino Arterial ECMO. Uh, as, uh, as in the lecture of Dr. Bala and Dr. Murli, we all know that the indications and the use of ECMO are continuously increasing. The technology is improving, so also the results are uh, getting better and better every day uh, compared to 1972 when it was first initiated. And the uh, COVID uh, pandemic has uh, put this technology in the limelight and more and more hospitals and units are interested in uh, setting up an ECMO program for the benefit of their patients. And uh, to summarize, it is an essential tool. Uh, the veno arterial ECMO is an essential tool in the care of children and also adults uh, if they have severe cardiac and pulmonary dysfunction. So veno arterial ECMO, that is basically a form of mechanical circulatory support where there is an oxygenator and a mechanical pump. These two things function in parallel with the patient's circulation, that is in the patient's heart and the lungs. So the oxygenated blood uh, comes back to the patient uh, through the uh, return cannula. So uh, in this particular table, I would like you to uh, basically focus on the lowest line of the table, wherein the, the advantages of uh, 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 various modalities are compared. In veno arterial ECMO, you have, uh, you, are, you have the facility to manage hypercapnic failure, you can manage hypo hypoxic failure also, and you can support the decompensated RV as well as the LV. And if you have combined ventricular dysfunction, we know arterial ECMO will take care of that also. So this is a very important slide that indicates the comparative advantage of veno arterial ECMO if you use it in uh, a particular subset of patients as, in, as per the indication. So uh, coming to my specific topic, the cannulation considerations, you have to be very particular about, uh, I mean, in deciding what cannulation strategy you want to use, you have to be sure of what is the etiology that you are dealing with, what is the pathology that you are addressing. And another important consideration is where you are putting the ECMO. For example, you could be putting it in the cath lab or in the emergency room uh, or uh, in, in outside the hospital or in pro your pro proper ICU so, uh, or in the OT. So you have different facilities available in different uh, locales. So accordingly, you have to consider what cannula you want to use. And also, you have to uh, consider what time frame you want to support the patient, whether it is for two days or uh, 20 days or for two months. So that will also determine some of the cannulas that you want to use. And another factor is how fast you want to start the ECMO. If you have five minutes, the patient is, I mean, for eCPR, five, 10 minutes, uh, I mean, uh, uh, that is different from what you are doing in a uh, cardiac OT and putting a patient on, let's say, elective ECMO. So the features of good cannulation include that initiation should be prompt and convenient. The long-term maintenance should be without difficulty to the patient and termination should also be easy. So I shall briefly be discussing about the central and peripheral cannulations, what cannulas are used, what are the surgical incisions used. So in central cannulation, basically, as you all know, it is co very commonly used in post cardiotomy patients. Many patients, whether they are neonates or infants or some, sometimes adults also, you find difficulty in them coming off bypass after a cardiac surgical procedure. Uh, also, if the patient has severe aortic ileic disease, you may consider putting a central uh, cannulation for ECMO. The main advantage of uh, uh, this uh, particular cannulation method is that uh, anti-grade flow is given via the ascending aorta that provides optimal central and upper body oxygenation and as Dr. Murli Chakravarti uh, was indicating, uh, you will definitely avoid cerebral uh, hypoxia. And uh, the disadvantages are that you will need general anesthesia, stenotomy is required and 
attendant complications of stenotomy like bleeding and infections can occur if the ECMO has been there for a long duration. There are various cannulas that are available for use in central cannulation. You have Biomedicus, uh, Edwards, DLP, Medtronic, various cannulas, various sizes for different BSA patients. So aorta can be directly cannulated or you can sew a uh, dacron uh, or a tube graft to the aorta. Uh, for example, if an LVAD is planned, then you can sew a graft to the aorta and then insert the cannula through that uh, particular graft. Then various uh, right atrial cannulas are also available. Uh, you may consider using an LV vent. There is a detailed discussion on this uh, in the next session. So for vent also, you can put in an appropriate cannula. Peripheral lower limb cannulation is another very frequently followed modality. In fact, it is the most common uh, cannulation technique for ECMO. And as you can see in this picture, uh, the arterial and venous cannulas are in place and there is a anti-grade uh, limb perfusion cannula also there. You have to give heparin 5000 minutes. Uh, never forget that when you are inserting the peripheral cannula as uh, after the placement of the guide wire. Usually you, uh, you can use a percutaneous method or a cut down semi-open method. And preferably you should uh, insert the cannulas from place different than the actual incision exposure site because you want a better placement of the cannula and you want uh, the main wound to heal much faster and better without any uh, soakage from that area. So this is uh, also very important to fix the tubings and the cannulas properly. Uh, there is a fixing platform uh, near to the incision site on which you clip the uh, two cannulas and the tubings. Then you fix the long tubings onto the skin with uh, good uh, thick sutures at least at two different places so that there is no displacement especially in today's uh, times where you want to ambulate the patients. So uh, the peripheral cannula that you usually use would be arterial cannula uh, for the return that, that could be 15, 17, 19, 20 sizes or 22 size also that would be rare. These 15 to 19 cannulas do usually do suffice and uh, these are various percutaneous ca cannulas available for the venous inflow. Uh, you have uh, various sizes available from 21 to 27. It is important to have a good placement of the venous cannula so that you have a good drainage right from the hole of the right atrium and a bit from the SVC and from the IVC. So the holes uh, of the cannula should be placed appropriately to ensure good uh, emptying of the heart. The surgical inc incisions that you use uh, would include uh, stenotomy, you could use a partial stenotomy, you can use a thoracotomy incision, you can use groin incision and groin puncture. Uh, you can also go in for axillary uh, or subclavicular incision, uh, which again you can go in for direct cannulation or you can sew a graft and then uh, put in the cannula. It is important here to avoid the complication of hyperperfusion of the limbs if you are using a graft. So for that you have to bevel your uh, uh, graft that you have sutured onto the artery in such a way that the most of the flow goes towards the heart and not the, and uh, it is not equally distributed between the, uh, the upper limb and the heart. So for the thoracotomy, you usually use a right uh, third space and uh, you can use a EOPA cannula, 20 or 22 French, uh, you, uh, for the arterial uh, inflow and uh, for uh, the venous uh, return, you use a RA or metal angle uh, tip cannula and uh, this helps uh, the smaller incision compared to stenotomy helps in weaning the patient of the ventilator faster and they can participate better in physiotherapy because there is less pain and there is also less displacement danger of the cannulas. Axillary graft outflow, as I mentioned, uh, you you have to uh, sew a graft in the proper direction so that, so that the blood flow is uh, conducted uh, well to suit the needs of the patients. Then there are various situations where you would uh, consider putting the ECMO. After cardiac surgery, a patient is not coming with bypass. That carries a high mortality of more than 50% if you are uh, putting in a, a ECMO in such a situation. You have to critically decide whether this situation is reversible, potentially, rever potentially reversible or irreversible. This situation is costly and the central cannulation usually is already there in place. So we can tunnel the cannulas through the epigastrium and close the chest. And uh, the second situation would be eCPR. Uh, you might be doing CPR, I uh, mean eCPR in the emergency or maybe out of hospital setting also at some peripheral hospital. So herein you would like to cannulate by the femoral artery and vein. You can achieve a very fast cannulation and starting of the ECMO within 15 minutes maybe. And then subsequently you can transport the patient. Dr. Murli is sitting here and uh, I, he has wide experience of transporting lot, lots of patients uh, using uh, portable uh, uh, ECMO technology. In, uh, and this, uh, Dr. Murli also mentioned this, uh, you have to be very fast in instituting the ECMO and you have to have very well-trained uh, teams 
uh, as uh, this photograph from Paris subway station shows, that they are able to resuscitate a patient uh, on the platform and then shift him back to the hospital with eCPR. You can consider putting the patients on ambulation also via ECMO, and uh, in such a situation, you would consider uh, having more of neck cannulations, the inflow through the IGV and the outflow through the subclavian artery or axillary artery graft. And uh, studies have shown that ambulatory ECMO has several advantages. There is faster post-transplant recovery, and there is reduced length hosp uh, hospital length of stay. This is a summary slide that indicates the different situations. In post-cardiotomy, you would uh, like to use uh, inflow cannula RA and outflow into the aorta. In uh, post cardiotomy situation, the mortality is high, but the recovery in the infants is very good. We have a large experience of using this mortality in uh, ASO, post ASO uh, uh, situations, and most of the uh, neonates or infants who are put on ECMO in this situation uh, do well. You can have cath lab crashes, and then you would uh, use a femoral or the internal jugular vein and the femoral artery in this situation. In this situation, the recovery would depend on the amount and the degree of myocardial damage that has occurred in the setting of uh, MI. You can have uh, eCPR in the emergency room. Uh, again, you would like to use the femoral vessels for this. <coughs> you may need to transfer the patients on ECMO. Femoral vessels are good for this situation. You may have to bridge the patient uh, for heart or lung. In this, you would consider giving them aggressive physiotherapy in the preoperative phase before they are going for transplants. So you would like to have a, a cannulation strategy which would permit uh, more ambulation. So you would use uh, IGV and axillary artery probably. You may have PGD, post heart or lung transplant, and you may have to support the heart or the organ, new organ for two or three days. So either femoral or the neck vessels would be okay for that, depending on whether you are uh, starting the ECMO in the OT or you are instituting it within, let's say, 24 to 48 hours in the ICU. That will depend on your cannulation. <coughs> that will decide your cannulation strategy. You can have in neonate or infant with myocarditis, and uh, since uh, you have to consider the size of the vessels here, so you will prefer neck vessels because that will give you good flow, and uh, the femoral vessels would be smaller in such situation. And uh, the recovery rate in such uh, situations is very encouraging, uh, the neonate or infantile myocarditis. Now there are some uh, special strategies. This is a neonate, as I mentioned earlier, common situation where you give post cardiotomy ECMO support. Usually the cannulation is central and uh, the recovery is good. Uh, this is a, a picture essentially of Berlin heart, but that tells uh, the way how you can, let's say, uh, sew grafts onto the chambers of the heart, like the right atrium and the pulmonary artery or the aorta also, to, uh, to work out various co uh, combinations of how to use cannulas uh, <laughs> using a tube graft uh, on the chambers of the heart. So this, is, uh, w this figure shows that it is very important to consider uh, distal perfusion if you are putting the femoral uh, vessel uh, cannulation. And once you put in the anti-grade flow uh, cannulas into the distal femoral artery, uh, usually it is in the form of five to seven or eight trench sheath. And once you do that, the, there is a significant improvement in the uh, color of the limb. And uh, this uh, indicates another method of uh, instituting uh, the distal perfusion. Uh, they have not used uh, anti-grade femoral artery puncture. They have used uh, the tibial artery for uh, retrograde uh, limb perfusion. That also can be done under ultrasound guidance. You can cannula the tibial artery and give perfusion to the to the uh, lower limb vessels. This is a special situation wherein uh, from Europe this was published. They have done quadruple cannulation. Two ECMO machines were used, and basically this patient had cardiogenic and septic shock combined. So they needed higher flows and uh, better support. And uh, interestingly, uh, with uh, such high ag and aggressive support, they were able to manage this particular situation. And uh, uh, one uh, situation uh, was mentioned wherein they considered decompression of the venous system also, uh, wherein they used another uh, graft sewn onto the femoral vein, and they decompressed the lower limb vein also to ensure better drainage of the lower limb vein. Uh, this is the north-south of the Harlequin syndrome, the pictorial representation of what Dr. Morley said. Basically, af as you can see, the oxygenated blood is reaching, uh, coming in from the oxygenator, oxygenator and reaching up almost to the subclavian artery. However, if you see, the blood that the heart is pumping is still uh, a bit uh, blue, so the, uh, the cerebral vessels are being perfused with hypoxic blood, so that can damage the brain. So that is another consideration uh, which is very important for the management of patients. Uh, uh, another two situations, you can consider VAV with Avalon cannulas and uh, the perfusion uh, and ambulation aspects of the patients are very good uh, with this Avalon uh, modality. 
to summarize, cannula insertion sites could be femoral artery, uh, the femoral vessels, the aorta, uh, RA, IJV, or subclavian and carotids. Insertion methods could be percutaneous, open cut down, or tunneling methods. Cannula types can be of various types, single lumen, dual lumen, or multi stage. And tip position can be at various places, as mentioned here. And the tip position is important to ensure good uh, perfusion. Uh, direction of flow could be anti-grade or retrograde, and the size of cannulas is uh, the venous cannulas would be larger in diameter and longer in length. The arterial return cannulas would be smaller in diameter and shorter in length. Limb perfusion can be done with five to eight French cannulas. This is a specific situation where they uh, they have put in the protic duo cannula. Uh, the drainage is from the right atrium and uh, in uh, outflows into the pulmonary artery and uh, there is a uh, detailed uh, talk on LV venting strategies so I will not be considering this so uh, thank you so much for your attention.